welcome to Music Geekery Live Reviews. Um, being joined today by my good friend Asher. Hello. Uh, so, we went to see, for context of anyone who's going to be watching this later on, uh, this is being filmed on the the 20th today isn't uh, yeah, it yeah 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 19th yes 19th. yeah uh, so 20th of march 2023 um and we went to see last night the proto men mm. yes long time coming yes this is a show that has been delayed multiple times um unfortunately a lot there is a very good reason for those delays and it's wow. all tied into the global pancetta <laughs> i mean it would be it yeah would be. i mean I, I i didn't even know how many how they had been delayed since like 2020 yeah it's like they'd been intending to come over to england several and it was sort of like they had to delay once for uh because of 20 they were planning to come over in 2021, um, but obviously everything in 2020 happened, mm. and then it all rolled over and rolled over. Yeah, but, but none the more for that, yeah. we finally, finally, in the year of our Lord 2023... Who's Lord? Um, Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, are they showing no Africa? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> off to a good start. <laughs> well, this is how these reviews normally go: <laughs> is we derail each other very quickly. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, but finally, after uh, after like uh, a year, two years, even the planning, we we managed to finally get the time to. Uh, to uh, and get us to scrape together a plan to finally get over there for yeah, uh, yeah it was uh, it was it was at um, Oxford that we uh, that we saw the concert at yeah um so for context for anyone who's watched previous live reviews uh, uh the reason the background looks different is because I am in a completely different location yeah. my my grandma was um was kind enough to let us stay here for when well we were coming over yeah. Um, but yeah, so the show, uh, just trying to think how to go over, well, um, let, let's discuss the, um, the support act first. Right, the, the, the KOK roaches. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, they were pretty good, uh, the sort of mixture of styles they had a bit of uh prog rock a bit of um punk rock going mm, on yeah I, I can see that um there's sort of elements of ska going on as well mm. the, 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 i mean the especially with the starting the um you, you had the bait the the bass uh player with a bowler hat mm. <laughs> who was really getting into it yeah um and the the and the, the, the front man with the like the pompadour or whatever that was mm. Not really a pompadour. A pompadour is more. Uh, well, he was more cold over. Yeah. Still, he had. I mean, it was it was kind of a contrast of styles. Yeah, um, but it all worked very well, and uh, the front woman was really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you could you could tell that uh, they're fairly new. I mean, they're they're sort of like seventeen, eighteen year olds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, they were. I mean, clearly very young. Right? Yeah. But none the more for that. They've definitely got a lot of talent, and mm. I'm eager to see more from them. Yeah, they, uh, and, and they, 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 they certainly do seem to be enjoying the rock, the, the rock star life as well, with the, with the get, getting into the crowd. Yeah. In, in more ways than one, even. Yeah, there were a few times of you had uh, the bass player who was coming standing on the barrier and all that sort of thing and you had the 
uh, lead guitarist who was coming into the crowd fully and at one point he was standing on the bar. Yeah. And, and he even went crowd surfing at one point. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was great fun. Um, and uh, yeah, as he's... I feel like they were a very good support band to have for the for a band like the Proto Men because the whole contrasting styles was very similar to mm. what um, Proto Men are like in that theirs is very much a fusion of styles. So they complemented the set very nicely. Yeah, they, it, it was. <laughs> uh, and and the, um, the 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 Proto Men seem seem very grateful for their support. Yeah. Uh, sort of making jokes about uh, shoving, sort of stuffing them into the tour bus and yeah. going on with them. Yeah, and they ended up by saying that it was that the, they were about the only thing that didn't fall apart on them. Mm. <laughs> uh, um, uh, so you had you had like um five or six uh, songs from the cockroaches, and then the. And then it was onto the main show. Yeah. The, the, the ear busting main show. <laughs> well, ear busting for you. I'm used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> although that said, I did experience ear ringing for the first time in 15 years of going to concerts. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe that says something about me. <laughs> I think it's a combination of. The acoustics of the place were very good, mm -hmm. and also we were right near the front. Yeah, so. uh, yeah. My, my my ear got a got a got a <laughs> got a fair amount of the of the right side um, speaker system. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, I I wasn't sure what to expect in terms of what they would play. I definitely. There were a few songs I was kind of expecting them to play just because they felt like they'd be good ones to play live. Mm -hmm. For example, the Hounds. Oh well, the you, you had you, you had those of course, mm. <laughs> and the, and the, and the uh, the stage presence for that was uh, everything I could have expected. Yeah, and um, of course, Light of the Night. Yeah, Light of the Night, and uh, uh, what was it? Escape from the city? No, not escape from the city. Um, yeah. Don't tell me about what I'm saying. Uh, I'll put the correct. If we've got the title of the song wrong, I'll put the correction when I do the editing. But yeah, it's it. it I mean, I. In hindsight, I really should have. Um, I really should have like boned up on their song beforehand, <laughs> and uh, that that way I could have joined in them with the rest of the crowd in um, in singing along to them. <laughs> uh, I mean. Full admission, um, we've only, well, I've listened to the two volumes of the Mega Man song, so I suppose we should really contextualise this a bit for anyone who's mm. not familiar. Yeah, probably. Yeah, um, so for those unfamiliar with the Proto Men, um, well, he introduced me <laughs> to them, yeah. uh, basically... Well, I suppose this is an opportunity to um, promote the Patreon yep, as well. Yeah, yeah just if, yeah. If, if you've got if you've got an album that you want that you want this to have a look at, then yeah. uh, then by all means, just um, uh, send send them your cash, send them the music, and and you'll you'll get you'll get your money's worth. Yeah, yeah. I so um, yeah. Uh, he and I were talking about the band Glory Hammer. Who, oh. They do all sorts of concept. Their albums are fully concept albums, and um, you know, because I was saying about uh, the different band members going by pseudonyms, we got on to talking about the Proto Men. Yeah. I had no idea who they were, <laughs> and um, Asha linked me to the music. Um, I I I knew vaguely that they the the proto man had kind of a similar thing of of, of using makeup and and masks to um to symbolize the various characters that they portrayed mm. in their own concept albums. Most of them linked to the uh, to the classic Mega Man games, mm. at, at least for their first couple of albums. Yeah, 
Um, basically, what they did, what what they've done is they've taken, from my understanding, after talking to some friends who know the series better than I do, mm-hmm. what they've done is taken the the future that Nintendo implied would happen with the Mega Man series at so the whole well, Capcom but well Capcom even um I'm just I, because they'd start they were initially produced on Nintendo that's right. what um but Capcom initially outlined sort of this dark future and Proto Men have gone whole ham with it yeah it, it, it's it's full cyberpunk dystopia mm. and um they've done so far they've done two volumes for this and it's really weird because volume two is actually a prequel to volume one mm. <laughs> and, so, and, and and yet it's called act two yeah and the, well i suppose well the way you could understand it is because they they really effectively framed this. So how they did the song progression is they started off with a few songs from Act... Well, they started off with a few songs we hadn't heard before. Mm. Well, um, I mean, the, yeah, I mean, there, there, there was like there, there was like one song in, in the middle of the middle of the concert that just seemed to be a cover of a very 80s thing that nobody seemed to know mm. the words to. <laughs> but, um, but no, I think... Um, I think I think to start with there was one that I wasn't so familiar with, and then there was a another one that was from Act One, which had the, which had the uh, we are control, we keep you safe. I can't remember that off the top of my head. I'm afraid. Mm. Um, I'll put all the details yeah, in the um when I do the edits. Then, then yeah, then it um kind of segue from that um back into um Act Two, back into the peaceful as it were. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean by doing it really effectively because they essentially, well, they had um, the song. I, I'm surprised they that they didn't do the. Oh, oh. On Act One, it's the one that's all very um, sort of cowboy sounding one. Oh, yeah, that one. The um, the, the one where where Dr. Light is, t- is talking about the backstory. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't use that to segue into Act 2 because they did frame it as though um, they, they opened with the Act 1 songs and then it was framed as though it's Dr. Light telling the story and then they bookended it with um, the fall of Proto Man. Yeah, the uh, the which is the introductory song of the of the origi- of the first album. Yeah. So so it kind of looped from the past back to the beginning. So. Yeah. Um, which I thought was a really effective framing device. Mm. Um, and, and and I like the um the, the gimmick at the end we had um, uh where where the the last uh, the the last song was um sung by. The, the lead man Kilroy with the <laughs> with a big red helmet on his head for Proto Man. They even got plugged in at the back, so he had the special mic. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, I'm just thinking of her. All, all the things that happened last night. Uh, I mean, yeah, 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 You had the one. You, you had the one um, fan in the, in the audience that apparently come all the way from Mexico. And, yeah. And she and she was fully decked up in in like um. In, in like um cyberpunk style proto uh, proto man gear with a with, with a full on the helmet the the Iron Man gold the props to her for that that yeah. was amazing yeah um just annoyed I didn't get some photos of her uh, um yeah there were a few people that were getting fully into it sort of cosplay wise which is really cool to see and yeah, I mean the uh, I mean there there was that. There was her definitely with the cosplay, and then there were a couple of people with like Proto Man shirts and weird visor things. Well, I think they they were essentially being the um, uh, I can't remember the name of the essentially male lead from um Act Two. Uh, the what um, sorry, I'm just thinking of it now. Was um, uh, Sniper Joe. 
But he was just called Joe. Oh right, yeah, he was called Joe. But they, he he was the one with the green helmet, which which went on at one point on the Kilroy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in fact, it, I think he said it on when he was um, playing it when he was singing singing Mega Man's lines from Act One. So. Mm. Oh, I think no, the helmet he was wearing though was a Mega Man. Oh, style it helmet. was it was in that style. Okay, yeah. I, I I think I was thrown off because it looked more green to me. So. Yeah, I mean. The gig was very much brought to you by bisexual lighting. <laughs> what? The whole purple and blue um, oh. 80s neon yeah, lighting. Okay. Uh, that is actually termed as bisexual lighting. <laughs> I mean, because of the price. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> and uh, uh, towards the end, there was... Um, I think I think it was at the Encore that, uh, that had... Um, we built this city from the from the no, no this city made us from yes the, but from what what was it the the album after the the first two volumes uh no that's actually at least from what I understand I'm not going to say for definite I'm just going by what the Spotify album art is which is three pillars uh, three pillars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to using the normal camera, I, yeah. to, I forget that I don't have the, um, I don't have my left hand side. What's my arm doing? What's my arm doing? Nobody can know. Um, uh, yeah, but it's got three pillars and they're d- dissolving into dust. So I'm guessing that that's one of the tracks from volume three, which... If it is, that'd be very cool. It'd definitely be thematically and lyrically appropriate. Uh, oh, something that has to be remarked upon. I really appreciated this because you don't always get this with live shows. Now, you do often get sort of additions into the music, sort of guitar solos and all that sort mm-hmm. of thing. You don't often get outright layering and additions into the music that um, isn't on the album. Um, So, for example, there were various points where there was extra keyboard work and guitar work that would be layered into the already existing stuff. And um, it felt like they were very much going for leitmotifs. Right, yeah, of course. In fact, I think we... uh... We we briefly discussed that with um uh whoever it was we talked to at the end. It was guitarist one of the guitarists slash keyboardists because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I think he is yeah because you've got you've got three well it's like four keyboardists. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, because I mean, like, yeah, because the female vocalist is also one of the keyboardists. Yeah, and and then you had. Well, I mean... And the male vocalist is a keyboardist. And you've got two other keyboardists. Yeah. And one of the well, keyboard... Other key... Well, really, two other keyboard... I mean, you, I yeah. mean, you had those, those, you those two keyboardists. And then you had the two which were on guitar. There, there was two... Because um, one of the guitarists was also a keyboardist. Oh. And you had <laughs> another keyboardist who was right at the back. And a big, bushy... Wait, a great the... big, bushy beard. Are you sure that wasn't the drummer? Um... No, the drummer, he was clean shaven. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he was right at the back, and mm. you were just looking. <laughs> Sprung up like a jackrabbit at one uh. point. <laughs> uh. Uh. They, they, they were they, they were really getting into the music. I mean, Kilroy was, was just like at one point on his knees, hammering on the keyboard, caked in sweat. <laughs> well, not just one point, at several points. Oh, it was... yeah. <laughs> Um, but, yeah, you, so four of them, so it's, uh, let's see, you've got Kilroy, I can't remember, I, I'm going to be, yeah. this is going to have so many edits of the, I, I, I mean, I only knew Kilroy's name because he had, he announced it in the preamble. Mm. Not, not only that, but it's obviously a reference to, um, Dr. Roboto. Oh, oh, okay, I'll take your word for that. Mm. Well, well, oh, oh, wait a minute! I think I think I heard that song at one point. So yeah, now I can hear it. Well, the actually the album is Kilroy was here, and you've got Doctor Roboto on that album. And 
Yeah, I need to, I need to watch the full one, listen to the full one of that. That's one mm. uh, I only know it because of another reviewer who um, he he has this. Um, was it one? No, it was Train Records. Uh, he has he does this show called Train Records, which is basically albums that could have ruined careers or did ruin careers. Ooh. So he's gone over things like Oasis with one of their albums and um and Kilroy was here and Creed Creedence Clearwater Revival, all that sort of thing. Um yeah, but back back on track. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so you've got It's like a seven-piece band, something like that. Mm. And two of them are vocalists. Three of them are guitarists. No, four of them. Because right? the male vocal... Because Kilroy is both... Yeah. Yeah. Four of them are keyboardists. Four of them are guitarists. And two of them are vocalists. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you had Kilroy on the, on the key guitar at one point before he decided that it was dead to him. <laughs> Uh, it it was a little bit creepy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was that was a that was a bit of a running gag going on where where you had where you had some periods where they're trying to set up things and everyone was just waiting in anticipation and he's going, "You, you guys are so quiet. It's really creepy." <laughs> <laughs> and you got a bit of back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> now you're really loud. It's a bit creepy. <laughs> But we, we had a lot of fun with that. There was quite a few back and forths, and just, um, it definitely feel. I was. I'm not gonna lie. I was rather surprised by how big the crowd was. Well, yeah, it was. It filled up a, filled filled up a pretty pretty big space. Yeah, I mean, it was by no means sort of, um, big arena size, but. It was a decent size. Yeah, and it, it, it's certainly enough to, to slightly wrap around the block. Yeah. And um, I, I'm, I'm happy about that because it means that it means they've got every reason to come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And who knows, maybe one day we'll have a, we'll have a repeat performance. Hmm. Uh, well, that time you'll come down my way. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, for one thing, you've got the car. Yeah, I've got the car. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, I'm just thinking through. It, there was so much going on, and um, it was very interesting how they didn't do the full. When they did the climax, they didn't do the full version of it. They just had um, the character's name is em Emily, isn't it? Uh, what the? Oh yeah, yeah. I I have I have to wonder since they did um since they didn't do the cow uh the 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 full bit for the um for the end of Act Two. Um, I have to wonder if the if the person who originally played Doctor Light has moved on or something. Um. I wouldn't like to say. I'll have to, I'll have to look into that. Yeah. But no, it, it was just um, he uh, Kilroy just went off, and um, there was there was a bit of music play first, a um, bit of instrumental, and then you had um, and then you had the uh, the lost Lenore reading her uh, reading out her bit of the letter, and then and then it was straight from that into um, straight from that into the beginning of Act One, mm. and then <laughs> and and then from that. Um, the bit of time and then into the encore. Yeah, I mean, everyone was going for the cheering for the encore, and maybe it's just because I, because of going to so many Devin gigs where he actually takes a mick out of <laughs> the whole. He may, um, Devin will very frequently go. We all know what's going to happen. We're going to go off. You're going to start cheering for an encore, and we're going to walk back on. Making out like we weren't going to do an encore. Right. That's pretty much word for word what he said at some time. <laughs> I mean, that's kind kind of the 
standard behavior. Yeah. <laughs> just, it, is there ever any illusion that um, that they're not going to come back for Encore? Um, it's happened to me once, but that's because, um, well, actually, no, not really. <laughs> I was going to say it's happened to me once, but in that case, it was just that they went straight into the Encore. Mm. Well, um, in which case, it had, uh, could, could we even consider the Encore? Yeah, mm. uh, it's just going for two hours straight. Mm. <laughs> Four and a half, forty, however long. Mm. Um, uh, I, I, I would be curious to hear more of their other stuff, like, because um, I, I've been looking into it. I, it looks like they've done some concept stuff for Terminator. Uh, yeah. So, well, some sort of an album with a, uh, I don't, I don't know if it's Terminator or Robocop that they've got on the cover. Mm. No, I think it's Robocop. Yeah. You're right. Um, I I'll have to investigate, but either way, I I re and um, yeah. Apologies for how shaky this footage is going to look <laughs> and everything. Unfortunately, I am fi filming on my phone. Yeah. Um, really need to sort out a suitcase where I can bring my tripod and camera and everything so that yeah. this sort. I'm not relegated to well, this. I mean, live, live and learn, right? I mean, mm. to, to, tonight I learned to bring earplugs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. His his um, his ears are not used to the heavy music yeah, as they, much as mine. Yeah, they they they, they for periods this morning, but they still feel like they've been hollowed out. Yeah. Although, as I said at the start, I ha I was feeling ringing after the gig, mm. but um. So I it definitely goes to show one. One good acoustics, mm. which is all important. I mean, as much as I love Devin, one of the um, few times that the, the gig wasn't entirely up to snuff was when I was at Hammersmith Apollo. Oh. Um, just something very peculiar about the acoustics there. Oh. Uh, uh, just, just, just very, very damp, very dead. Um, it was a bit muddy. Oh. I, I, it's very peculiar. It, it, like, it was still a decent gig. It's just there were times where it all, it, it was a bit muddy, and I'm not sure what the, what was up with that. Especially, it's especially weird considering like a week or two after that gig, was at another gig at the same place. Acoustics were fine. Mm. And it just raises questions of. And I can't imagine it be anything to do with the instrumentation because the other gig was a Lindsay Sterling gig. Oh. So there'd be a lot of el electronics and all that sort of thing going on. So I don't know what it was. Oh, I, 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 I wouldn't like to say. Mm. Uh, but none the more for that. Really enjoyed the gig. Um, if you do get a chance to see the Proto Men, definitely go. I I had a lot of fun, and um, if you if you're lucky, you'll have the opportunity like we did to have a chat with uh, some of the band members. So yeah, that was a nice treat. Yeah, I I I thought as um, Asha was going to get a drink just. So it wasn't completely dead. <laughs> um, I just took the opportunity because a couple of them had come out to talk to the fans. So I thought, you know what? Great opportunity. Um, but yeah, the, just... Um, the One of them who we were talking to, it sounds like he might have a few concerns about um, how Volume 3 might be received. Oh yeah, he 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 um uh, he said that it was going to be in a very different style, and not everyone was going to go for it. Mm. Which, as far as I'm concerned, it being in a in a different style isn't a problem for two reasons. One, uh, two, two reasons. <laughs> it's so awkward. <laughs> um, one is the fact that um. 
volumes one and two are very different from each other as it is. Yeah, there, there was, there's there's very different uh, very different style, not just in not not just in the music, but in the in even the audio quality. They were they were pushing for very different angles there. Yeah. Like um volume one is much more um you've got a lot more static effects and um l low fidelity stuff going on, whereas um which is kind of to I feel like that's deliberately done to represent the sort of scrabbling together of whatever they can find mm. kind of idea. Yeah. I I I think they um I think I read something about uh, they they specifically studied in sound in engineering and deliberately just deliberately decided to throw their good effects out the window to to get the effect that they were after. Mm. Um and it works really well for the album. Uh the and act two that that's much more of a prog rocky album with a few um i mean the hounds is very much um that is a rock opera song Ooh, yeah i can i can hear that yeah and 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 by the end it it gets into um it, it uh, meatloaf stylings yeah meatloaf and um well the hand is very nick cavey in sound mm. um which um, I love Nick Cave, so that was one of those. Ooh, <laughs> um, uh, I'm just thinking. Um, so, and the other reason is again, we get back to Devon Townsend. No two albums are alike with Devon Townsend. There are similarities, but you're. If you're familiar with the albums, you'll be able to go, well, this is on this album, this is on this album. Yeah. So I feel, for me personally, the albums being very different styles just works for me. <laughs> because it means I'm never at risk of getting bored of their stuff. Um, and it, it tells me that they care, yeah. which is an all-important thing, because... You can tell when a band is phoning it in. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, uh, Is there one? well, most immediately I can think of is um, Metallica's most recent outing. It, like, I, mo most Metallica stuff I love, with the exception of that one album, but we're not going to talk about that one album. Oh. We're not going to talk about that album, are we? <laughs> well, it's been done to death, that's why oh, we're not. Okay, well, you'll have to tell me it later. Yeah. Um, anyone who is familiar with Metallica knows which one oh, album okay. I'm talking oh, oh, wait. Except for those two albums. <laughs> that, that was even more of a mystery to me. Well, the other one was a very ill-advised collaboration with Lou Reed. Okay. <laughs> it's one of those, on paper, it sounds like it would work. In in execution, it was terrible. Oh, uh, you you know when you hear something that's sort of like. That's the best way I can describe it. You know when you hear, poorly done mashups on YouTube. Mm. That's what it came across as. Oh dear. Um, but again. None the more for that. We're trying to be positive. Yes, we, yes. We had a we, lot of fun. We had, we had a lot of fun with this band. Yeah. Um, I need a selfie stick or something. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, oh, thumb getting sore from holding. Oh, uh, Gabby, you've been holding it up for half an hour now. Yeah. Um... Just thinking. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, I mean, the the last bit was on was um was how, was was how it it shows that they care that they're they're going with different styles. Yeah, because I find when bands, if they're going for a different style, like sometimes it can work, sometimes it can't. <laughs> with some bands, they change their style, and you go, "What the hell were they thinking?" Case in point. Slayer with Diabolus in Musica. Mm -hmm. uh, they went new metal. Okay. 
Bearing in mind Slayer is a thrash metal band. Mm, what? Well, yeah. And the heavier side of thrash, for that matter. So it was a, a very big leap in the wrong direction. Yeah. Um. Just anything. Ah, uh, Loss. Uh, our final thoughts. Um, as, as I was saying earlier, if you get the chance to see Proto Men live, definitely go and see them. And uh, well, it was a blast. Yeah, it was a blast, and apparently they are. Uh, next month, going into the studio to get more of Volume Three done. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, now I know I said in the last video I did that I'm essentially retiring doing reviews for the most part. But if that comes out, well, when that comes out, it's a better way of putting it. I will be covering it because. Um, well, I've already done volumes one and two, so it'd be just as well to round it out. Oh, I'll be watching. Mm. Um, any last thoughts from you? Uh, just as my, uh, as far as my first um up close and personal rock concert goes, it was a it, it was a Albert uh, Green. I'll be uh, uh well if you, if you if you see any others, but you. They catch your eye over the next couple of years, then <laughs> then maybe I'll be able to to sort something out and we'll, and bring along some earplugs next time. <laughs> I mean, if you need some, I do have them. No. Uh, necessity when your ears are sensitive to fireworks. Um, well, yeah, yeah, I would be. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but a bit that's it for this very rambling diatribe. <laughs> you can tell it's been a while since I last did one of these. Yeah, we, we had fun. Yeah. We had fun the whole, the whole night through. Yeah. Um, I think the only, the only thing that uh, really got us antsy is how long we were in the queue for. Yeah, 45 minutes, if yeah. you believe that. And, yeah. and, that, and that was after the, the venue was allegedly supposed to be open. Yeah. Um, I do have to wonder what was going on there. Yeah, yeah. I maybe the band got stuck in traffic. Well, yeah, maybe that. I, uh, I have to wonder why they didn't. Why they didn't let people in though. Maybe it was because they couldn't clean clean everything up. I mean, the floor was automatically sticky when we got in. There. Yeah, that's. It, it's one of those things I was saying about how um, it, it's almost like any gig I've been to where it's a. A sort of a shiny surface floor. It's almost like there's a sheen of popcorn stickiness on the floor. It's just a rule of nature, I suppose. Yeah. Nature of the beast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, uh, um, I suppose, if we were to rate this, we would. Well, I'm not sure how well we can time this to be simultaneous, but uh, um, you've seen some of my more recent reviews, haven't you, with the rating? Uh, the, uh, is it, is it the, the glorious one? Yeah. So. Glorious! Da, 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 da. <laughs> I didn't. He didn't need to do that. No, but... no it's just my, my my brain just automatically playing the rest. Yeah, of it. yeah, but yeah, um, that's it for this video. Uh, don't know what the next video is going to be. I probably I will get round to doing that um, rant video. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we shall see how much traction that gets. Mm. I, I'm almost expecting that to gain traction purely by people going, wait, someone hates this song? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, so, well, I'll, I'll be against something from that, and yeah. uh, looking forward to the next one, yeah. Yeah, and, but, for now, go 
check out Proto Men. Go check out volumes one and two, right. and um, go check out their Queen cover album because that's a really good listen. You wouldn't expect because Queen is a tough band to cover. Mm. You wouldn't expect it to, but it really holds up. I'll have to check that out. Um, but anyway, uh, um, that's goodbye for, from us from, for now, and hopefully this will light up your night.